Hey, what's going on? It's Trip from TripAdvice.com, and as you can see here with me is Miss Kezia Noble. Kezia, say hello. Hello. Kezia is a dating expert for men. She runs boot camps for men all the way in the UK, so if you're there, you should definitely check her out. She is a best-selling author. She sells a number of products on her website helping men attract women and we're here today talking about flirting. So Kezia, thanks for sitting down with me and sharing some cool information. Thank you for inviting me on your show. Yes, absolutely. You want to tell uh, the guys a little bit about you and how you got started and how you know all this great stuff? Um, okay, I've told this story so many times. I'm, I'm sure. I'm just going to like really streamline this one. Um, I've been doing this since 2006. Uh, so that's a long time. You know, we're talking about a decade here. Um, I was headhunted, you could say, because I, I am, I was extremely honest and direct. Um, am I allowed to swear on your channel? Absolutely. No? There's no filter. Okay, so, so there was like no bullshit with me. And I think a lot of guys were out there, um, pay, you know, paying good money to get advice from, you know, men as well as women. And I noticed that the women who were in the community were giving very vague what I call wishy-washy advice, you know, just be yourself, smile more. And I was like, screw that, you know, that that's not going to work. Girls don't sleep with nice guys. They sleep with great guys or they sleep with bad guys. Let's just be honest here. Let's be transparent with these men. Let's really, you know, give them that honest insight into the female mind. Um, I'm very direct, as I said, but I'm also not there or here to make friends. I got my friends, you know. <laughs> I don't need any more. Um, I'm there to just get guys' results. And I think that the company I used to work for noticed that, and so they took me on board. I got a, a lot of lot of one on ones, a lot of private students. Word got round. This is the woman that you go to if you really want to get like uh, a total, you know, personality inventory done. <laughs> uh, again, bullshit free, tough love methods. Got to be cool to be kind, guys. Um, and then a uh, publishing company heard about me. They offered me a book deal. I launched my own company at the back, off the back of that. Uh, my YouTube videos went viral, and now I run a, a company and I have a team of fantastic instructors and dating experts, and we run seven-day courses, mastery courses, boot camps, and as you said, I have DVDs and eBooks for people who can't be bothered to come to London. Well, I think people should be bothered to come to London because it sounds like you know your stuff. You've been doing this longer than most people. Uh, that I know way longer than I have. I, I was, I'm probably half you. I've started five years ago. And uh, I even remember coming across your stuff when I was learning myself how to get better with women. So that's, that's how oh, far really? back I go with, with your wow. stuff. So it's really cool Ooh. being here today. Yeah, absolutely. So let's talk about flirting because I think flirting is, well, in my opinion, one of the more important aspects of of attraction and I also think that a lot of guys don't know how to do it and yeah. don't know how to do it well. What do you think? Yeah, and most guys don't do it because they've got this mental block which is I don't want to come across creepy. So what they do is they think, well, you know what, I'll just be i I'll just carry on being nice and just saying like the right book somewhere and I'll get into her bed under the radar. That's what they think. Like she's gonna wake up one day and I'm going to be next to her. She's going to be like, oh, you know, you got in under the radar. It doesn't happen. You do have to incrementally start shifting her perception of you within the interaction. If she's super attracted to you beforehand, yeah, you probably don't really need flirting. But 90% of the time, that's not the case. A lot of guys are very happy to stay in the comfort zone. I call it the comfort zone because they get too comfortable. So they reach this kind of platonic stage. And she's listening, she's prioritized him, sure, and that's a good thing, but essentially it is still the friend zone. And the only way to get out of the friend zone is to sexually escalate. And that's just really another word for flirting, in my opinion. Right. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, the guy I like that, the comfort zone. It's they and they think that I've talked about this so much. They think that, you know, if they just stay friends with the girl long enough, like you yeah. said, magically, one day the girl's gonna be like 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 it's a movie, I'm in yeah. love with him. Right? Never happens, never will happen. Yeah, it never, ever happens. In so, the movies. <laughs> right, in the movies. And, and, and I think that 
the movies and television have all tricked us to think that that's possible. And of course, yeah, we've got a lot to answer for. Yeah, yeah. And what an easy way too, because we don't have to put ourselves out there. It teaches us, oh, we can just go around and and try to be her friend. Be yourself. <laughs> and just be us, right? And and then yeah. it's fine. So, all right, well, let's talk about what a guy can do to be able to flirt. You know, you know, I mean, we understand why a guy should flirt because that's going to help what her see him as a sexual being. That's what I always say. What do you think? Absolutely. I agree with that. I mean, there's two types of sexual escalation or flirting. Um, there's the verbal side and then there's the nonverbal, right? And you've got to get both aligned with each other. So let's just start off with the easy stuff, which is what to say to her. Like what, what kind of things can you say to her um, that's going to get the ball rolling? So let's look at compliments, okay? Compliments, you've got the type which are, you know, you're beautiful, you have a lovely smile, you've got big, beautiful blue eyes, and they're nice. Again, we go back to that word. We're going to go back to that word a lot, nice. Um, they can apply to anyone that happens to have big blue eyes. They can apply to anyone who happens to have a nice smile. It doesn't make the girl feel special. So you've got to be careful here, guys, okay? You don't want to make the girl feel idolized. You want to make her feel special. Two different things. So if a guy just keeps, you know, sending her a wave of vague compliments, that's not flirting. That's idolizing, right? Big difference. Your compliments must feel bespoke and tailor-made for her. So for instance, you know, you've got a really filthy laugh, but you've got an innocent smile. I find that interesting. Just that alone has sexual references in them. It's not particularly direct. It's not really super sexual direct, like, you know, I just want to bang you or you know, you fucking incredible body. It's so hot. It's not like that level, but it's got the um, connotations. You know, it's, it's rooted in there. You know, the word filthy. Okay. That's, that's, that's quite a strong word, but at the same time, you're not pushing it to the extreme. Um, you know, you got a body like Jessica Rabbit, you know, which I prefer. I can't bear it. You know, I'm not a dog. I don't, you know, I like meat on my bones or something like this. You could, you could say, so it can be playful. You know, that's important. It can be playful. If you feel like, you know what, I, I have nothing to say. Like, she's just hot. I can't find anything. You should always have some uh, stock and trade compliments. Always have them. But the one I think is great, um, and it really creates that, that shift and her perception of you and the interaction, is you just stop and say, now I know why I'm attracted to you. Just that, and leave her hanging. Like she's going to want to know why, what is it, what have you seen? Doesn't matter. That, that's your business. That's not her business. And this is something I experimented with about two years ago. Um, and I thought it's going to be hit or miss. My, my feeling said it's going to work because I'd love it if someone said that to me. And it does work. So when in doubt, guys, use that one. It's strong. It's passionate. Um, and it feels, again, without actually saying any specific compliment, it still feels tailor-made and it feels bespoke for her. She wants to feel like this moment was created for her and no one else. So th those are quite powerful starting points. And then what you want to do is you want to start increasing the tone of those. I always say, go for the legs. You know, rather than, you know, aiming for breasts and ass. I mean, you can go for those things, but you need watertight confidence. It's just a basic equation. The more direct, the more sexually enhanced the compliment is, the more confident you have to be with the execution. Okay, that's how it works. If you're feeling like a little bit, I don't know, like a little bit vulnerable or you're a bit, you're not sure about the situation or you're just feeling like a bit shit, try and stay away from those because then the non-verbal uh, communication is not going to be aligned with what you're saying. And they have antennas for this women. So when I say legs, you know, don't say, oh, you've got great legs or you've got nice legs. Again, that's like what her male friend would say. And that's kind of like, I, that's the idolizing kind of, of way of saying it. Am I getting that yeah. right? It, yeah, it is, it's vague. It's vague. It's unthoughtful and vague, especially. It's like, okay, you've got nice legs. Oh, thank you very much. You know, yeah, and then she's going to start saying, yeah, you know, like I go to the gym and, I, and it all becomes really um, very clinical, right? It becomes clinical. So what I would say is bring it to yourself. Now, this is where you need to take a small, tiny, calculated risk, guys. You bring it to yourself. 
you bring the fact that her legs are giving you some sort of enjoyment. So you say, you know what, your legs are driving me crazy. Put them away. You could say something like this, or your legs are fucking sexy. And that's it. Okay. That's showing her that, you know, there's something about her that you're not saying, oh, it's, it's very nice. You're saying it's having an effect on you. But the real trick here is the timing. You want to change the subject as soon as possible. Now, I don't mean change the subject because you're embarrassed or it's out of shame or you're not certain about what you've said. I'm, I'm advising you to do it because if you stay in that moment for too long, I call it like an, you're, you're putting an incubator around that moment and it's going to drop. You know, you've reached a high. And then what happens is all this shit starts filling up in her head very quickly about men shouldn't say that to me. He just, you know, he's sexualizing me. All this stuff that Cosmopolitan and, you know, her female friends have drummed into her head for years and years and years. It just starts rising to the surface. You're going to be clever about this. You're going to change the subject. You're going to say, right, that was that thrill, that moment, that peak. Would you like some more wine? Or, you know, pass me that, whatever it is. But the delivery is important. It's just like you're changing the subject. As a matter of fact, not out of embarrassment. Does that make sense? Yeah, that makes sense. In fact, one th technique that I teach that's sort of similar to this mm -hmm. is you kind of sandwich it. So let's pretend we're talking about, I don't know, London and fun things to do in London. And that's the conversation. I would interrupt that conversation and say the line about her legs like, God, you have fucking sexy legs. Okay, put those away. Anyways, so yeah, London, yeah, da, 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 exactly, da, da. Exactly and you just that. go back to it. So I think that might be a really cool, easier technique for guys because they'll know exactly what to say yeah. to go back to it. It just use yeah. it and pound it into a conversation yes. and then go back to what you were saying. I like that. It's, it's a spike. Remember, it's a yeah. spike. It's an attraction spike. If you sat there and look at her like a little dog waiting for like, you know, his pat on his head... Uh, it, or his compliment back, it becomes too intense. And like I said, all that, you know, all that shit comes to the top of, you know, comes to the surface and it's like, you know, she's going to start being either, she's going to be introverted about it, go in on herself, or she's going to be confrontational about it. Either one is going to kill the mood. Right, right. I like that. Okay, so let's keep on this topic for a second mm -hmm. about uh, verbal flirting. So we're talking about compliments. Are there mm -hmm. any other ways to flirt with a girl verbally that's not a compliment? Is there any other ways guys can do that? Yeah, you can put suggestions in their head. You can put suggestions quite early on. Um, funny, I've got a funny, funny line, and uh, we use it quite a lot uh, on the team when we help our students. Um, there's this line where you go into like a club or a bar, and you go up, you see a hot girl, and you say to her, I just had the weirdest experience. She's like, what? Um, I just saw this guy go up to a girl, like literally confidently walk up to the girl and say to her, I just want to go down on you all night long. And she left with him. Isn't that crazy? And the girl's going to have an opinion on that. They always do like, oh, you know, that happened. Already, you've planted like a sexual tone into the interaction so she's not viewing you as like this unit or something you know um you're already planting that so there's lots of different ways you can do that but for specifically flirting um i would say if you have a playful nature if you consider yourself to be a playful person then it's going to be a lot easier for you to flirt okay because you're already touching a little bit you're already like um you know, talking maybe about things where, you know, the playfulness allows you to get away with it, about, you know, certain parts of her body, for instance. If you're a serious person, and remember everything I teach, I always do it, whatever I pass on, I always show guys how to apply it in a way which remains congruent with them. So if you're an introvert, I'll work with that. If you're an extrovert, I'll work with that. Right, right. But if you're like more that quiet, reserved guy, then you want to make it more sporadic. Okay, you, you want to use, for instance, what I just gave before about, you know, that very powerful dominant attraction spike. That's the kind of, that, that's the, the road you should, be, you should be going for. 
Whereas if you're more playful, you can put a lot more in there. You can flirt. You can. It doesn't have to be so. You know, it doesn't have to be so limited. You can be flirting quite a lot. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah, that makes perfect sense. I like that. Okay, so let's talk about nonverbal flirting. I'm sure you have some great techniques and thoughts on that. What a guy can do with uh, with nonverbal. Yeah, with nonverbal, it, it's it's super difficult to show this over Skype. So I can't I can't actually demonstrate it, but I can. That's okay. Do your best to describe down. it. Yeah. Okay, sure. So um, I have something called the upside down triangle, which is when you look at one eye, go to the other, look at her lips, and you know carry on doing it. And you don't do it like staccato, you know, like like a robot. It has to be um, it has to be very softly done. Um, there's not really a rhythm to it as such. It's what you have to almost go with what feels right when you're doing that. Um, and that takes a bit of practice. So practice on the girls you're not interested in first. <laughs> um, and that creates the impression that you want to kiss her. Now, on a conscious level, when you get this right, it's super potent. I mean, it's super powerful. When you get this right, she feels that there's a shift, but it's on a subconscious level. So consciously, she's not aware of it. So she can't say, hey, what are you doing? If she says that, it means you're not doing it right. So subconsciously, she's reacting to this. Now, let's say she's not ready. She's just not ready for that. She's not ready to take it there yet. She will show you a subconscious sign. She'll just take a small step back. She'll take a giant leap back and go, oh, what are you doing? Again, it's subconscious. She'll just take a small step back. She'll put a, a drink between you and her. And that's a good way for you to gauge the situation okay we're not on that yet so I'm going to do a couple of warm-ups before I get to that stage so she can't feel like she's rejected you does that make sense she can't mm -hmm. she, she does she's not even aware of what's going on another thing is um to, to add to that would be to slow down the rhythm of your voice so like when we're talking like this we're at sort of like you know medium pace but if you talk a little bit like that and it's you know a tone lower it's, for, it's much more intimate. The energy becomes like a laser beam. Now, if you start doing that all of a sudden with the, with the upside down triangle and you combine all this, she's gonna, she is going to be aware of it. That's why I call it the dipping method. You've got to dip in and dip out. So you go into it like for maybe three seconds at first, like two seconds, and then you go back to just talking normally, and then you keep increasing it each time. So, for instance, um, you can talk about anything. This is the great thing. It doesn't have to be sexualized. So you could be talking about, you know, the weather, like, oh, yeah, the weather where I, where I am is really hot. And, uh, yeah, I had a, a really nice day today. Anyway, um, so it's just like a moment of like, whoa, whoa that I, hit me. <laughs> yeah, I do it with my I students. Like, and they get really good. like cross me. Like, can we keep this professional? I'm like, yes, I am being professional. <laughs> um, so it's. It creates an energy, like a force field almost. It's, it's really potent when you get it right, really potent. Um, and, uh, yeah, it's, it's just creating a moment rather than inflicting her with, like, a whole, like, you know, a tsunami of emotions. You don't want to do that. She doesn't want to feel how like come? she's how being... Come, yeah, I understand the dip method, but I guess I want to understand why you have to do that. Because that's the art of flirting. That that is essentially it. It's about um, for me. If I had to define flirting, it'd be push pull. I know it's a real pickup, um, you know, terminology, but you're you're playing. You know, you're fucking about the person's head, and people respond to that. Both men and women. Like you know, if I went on a date with a guy, and you know, I'm wearing a really low cut dress, and I'm really like, oh, yeah, baby, and all that. Yeah, he's going to think, good, you know, I'm, I'm in there. I'm going to sleep with her tonight. But, you know, he's not going to enjoy it as much. There's no way he's going to enjoy it as much as if I was playing my little game of cat and mouse. And um, that's essentially what you're doing with, with this method is it's push and pull in a very, um, you know, on a micro level, on a micro level. I think it's super powerful. I think we also get kind of kind of piggybacking off of what you're saying. We get... Uh, more excited over a reward that's tougher to get. You know, like you're saying, like, yeah, it will be 
fun for the guy if the woman is overtly flirting with him and he knows in the back of his head, okay, she'll sleep with him. But when it's a little bit more challenging, the reward seems greater. Well, yeah, it's a challenge. You know, people want to feel like they've, um, you know, they've won. You know, they, they, they've managed to get the, as we call the uh, ASCOT gold cup. You know, that, that's what they, it, it means a lot more. They've had to work for anything. If you're given it on a plate, you don't appreciate it as much. Hence why all the lottery winners, I don't know about America, but it's the same. They're all like, uh, they're broke, like within five years and they're unhappy because, you know, they didn't have to work for it. Um, easy come, easy go. Yeah, it's just about building value also. And if you make the person work for it, then they're going to value it a lot more. I mean, that applies like way all the way through the relationship and the interaction. Like I teach guys, this is just going off topic a little bit, but uh, a lot of guys screw up, you know, effectively. They screw up um, when it comes to like um, arranging the date. They get a bit needy. They start saying, oh, yeah, I've got Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday free, and, and they become too available. Therefore, they decrease their value. She doesn't have to work for it. Therefore, she um, becomes more flaky because she hasn't valued, she hasn't had to work, she doesn't value his time that he gives to her. So it, it um, transcends all the way through the interaction, that rule. So what do you think is the best way then to set up a date instead of doing what you just said right there? Oh, you know what? I give advice which um, when guys first hear it, they don't want to do it because it almost it counteracts everything they've been taught. I tell them, um, make sure you don't get too enthusiastic. Okay, you've got the girl's number. You will screw it up if you become too available. So you say to her, you know what, it's a shame. This next two weeks is fucking difficult. Let me get these two weeks out of the way with and we can, we can meet up, go for coffee. Immediately, you're a man in demand. You're not putting her on a pedestal. You're not prioritizing her that quickly. She will remember that. You're not, you're not bugging her, you're not annoying her, you're not being needy. And guys are automatically thinking, no, 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 I've got to get the date straight away or I'm going to lose the momentum. Not so, not so. Um, if you think, you know, the two-week one is too risky, then you can say, you know, shit, what a busy week. I've got, you know, Thursday free and I think I've got Sunday lunch time free. I think. You see, you, you play along with that. So whatever it is, is your time is limited and precious and believe me, it's going to increase her. It's, it's, it's a, you're going to increase her buying temperature. I mean, this is essentially sales, what we're talking about here. And it's much more likely that she's going to say, right, okay, I'll take that date then. If that's what you've got available, I'll take that date. Yeah. If you say to her, I've got the whole week free, she'll be like, yeah, well, you know, call me and we'll arrange something. It's, it, it hasn't got that, um, what do you call it in sales? Um, um, is it time constraint? I've forgotten. There's a, there's a sales word for it. Um, False time constraint. I'm not sure what it is. No, not false time but if anyone's into sales, they'll know exactly what I'm talking about. It's when you you say something's going, going, gone. You know, <laughs> we've only got three left. We've got two left. That one. Oh, uh, I've almost got it. Uh... It's at the tip of my tongue too. I'm thinking. Yeah, about I know. It. Not abundance. It's like the opposite. Uh, scarcity. Uh, scarcity. That's yeah. it. Scarcity. We finally got there. <laughs> right. Right. No, exactly. And you gotta you gotta portray to her that your time is scarce and in demand. And you have a little bit of time for her. You can find the space to do it, but it's going to be difficult because you have a busy life and you have things going on and she's going to like that. And she's going to see that. And that scarcity is going to be like, well, I want some of that. Right. It's like, well, when there's only, only five left. It's like, I want one. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's really fundamentally sales techniques, isn't it? That we teach. I mean, listen, Sort of. It's persuasion, you know, it's persuasion. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But here's the thing, and this is what I always say, is you could use all these techniques, but if you're not actually living an awesome life, if you're not an interesting person, then these techniques and all these things will work. But then once she's on a date with you, or once you guys are dating, it's just going to fall, you know. And, and oh, no, you've got to be authentic. Right. Go out it's there and get a real. life. Get your hobbies, get your shit together. Uh, you know, work out what your passions are, your goals. No, that stuff is like, yeah. Yeah, hopefully, hopefully the reason why you can't meet up with her is because you actually have things going on, not because yeah, that's we're, ideally, saying, we're telling you to do it. Let's just say you had a free week and you've got nothing to do, don't let it on. Trust me. Yeah, just don't, don't, yeah. Don't be too available. Exactly, don't be too, don't be too available or start making things happen right now and then text her and, 
and try to set it up. Well, yeah. this is great. Kezia, thank you so much for coming on and teaching these guys these really cool flirting techniques and, and what it's all about. And it's cool to hear it from uh, not only another dating coach, but a female as well, someone who obviously understands it and isn't giving the, the generic advice. So guys, go ahead and check out kezia-noble.com. I'm going to put that link below. Also check out her YouTube channel. She's got a lot of awesome videos, so go check that out. I'll put the link down there as well. Anything else you want to add before we go, Kezia? Yeah, just a quick one. Um, if you're interested in learning about flirting and, you know, what we talked about, the upside down triangle, and you want to see me in action doing this and showing you in micro detail how to copy and paste it, uh, check out the Attraction to Seduction DVD in particular. That's three DVDs that explains how to attract and seduce what it says in the tin. Awesome. Guys, go check that out. Kezia, thanks so much. Talk to you soon. Thank you for having me. Thank you. Absolutely.